Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with a review of the Hubson FPV X4 Desire, aka H502S. Uh, now this is essentially a, a lot like the H501S that I just reviewed, except for this has brushed motors and a 720p camera. So it's a little bit downgraded, but this does have GPS, and as far as I know, that makes this the first brushed quad with GPS. So that's pretty cool. This is, you know, light and safe and affordable, and it has GPS hold, return to home, altitude lock, FPV right on the transmitter. So pretty impressive model all around. Um, but yeah, like I said, as far it's it's you know pretty much feature wise, it's the exact same as the H502 501s. Uh, so we've got the you know the same transmitter. Um, however, they don't work with each other. I don't know if maybe there's slight firmware differences or something. Uh, but you know, as far as the features go, it is the exact same. So we have our two switches up here, which in the down position are our normal. Um, you know, pretty much manual, however, it does have altitude, you know, hold full time. So, as long as your hand is off the throttle, it's going to hold its height. But if you're not in GPS, you know, it can drift around a little bit. Uh, but if you flip the left switch up, that's going to put on GPS hold. And so now it's going to hold its position and hold its height nice and smooth and steady. And then while you've got GPS hold on, if you flip the right switch up, that's going to do a return to home. So that's going to take go back to wherever it took off from. Uh, but you have to be in GPS hold first. Clicking the left stick is going to turn on headless mode. And then clicking the right stick is going to turn on follow me mode, just like the 501S. Uh, so, you know, the, the transmitter itself has GPS in it and the quad has GPS. So they know where each other are. So once you turn on that follow me mode the quad turns around and faces you so now it's filming you like a selfie drone and wherever the transmitter moves it will keep its you know distance and position and everything from that so as you move around it follows you around so pretty neat um, little option there and then the screen has just you know a ton of osd on-screen display uh you know it tells you how many um satellites you have for both the transmitter and the quad it tells you you know tel telemetry like height and distance and speed and uh, battery level and all that so it'll give you a warning when the battery is getting low uh, so really really neat um, you know lots of cool options you can uh, return or put a micro sd card in the uh, screen here and or in the monitor and record what's on the screen so even your FPV um, signal noise is going to come through on your footage that way or you can oops <laughs> I forgot I had just placed the props on there I didn't screw them on oh well um, the uh, quad itself has a micro SD card slot it does not come with the micro SD card though uh, but so you can trigger it to record to the card and so then you don't get any interference in your footage, and it's nice, uh, clear quality footage. And it does have a wide-angle lens, uh, but it's just 720p, so it's not quite as high-quality video as the uh, 501S. Uh, but still pretty, pretty good quality video. Uh, let's see, it also comes with a set of spare props and a screwdriver for screwing those props on. We've got a USB charger here that charges through the, the balance plug and we do have a 2S LiPo, um, 610 milliamp hour and that has the JST plug and our balance plug. Uh, that takes about an hour and a half to charge with the USB charger and you get about 11 and a half minute long flights with a 30 second LVC warning, so really nice long flights. Uh, this does not require FAA registration. It's quite a bit under the limit. I believe it was like, a, I think it's like 150 grams or something. So well under the limit. So you don't have to be registered for this one. Uh, let's see. Any other? Um, there is, you can um, upgrade the firmware. There's a USB port. There we go, right there. 
Uh, so you can plug a USB cable in this and connect it to your computer to upgrade the firmware. And you can upgrade the firmware on the transmitter as well. And there are firmware upgrades for this already, but I have not messed with them. I just haven't had the time to look into it. And and they kind of fe you know fear me a little bit, or, or they kind of scare me. That uh, I don't know, I just always worry that they're not going to work right or something. So I haven't messed with that. Uh, but you can upgrade the firmware, but as it is now... Every time you you start this, you have to do a compass calibration. So, you know, you've got to sit there and spin it this way until the transmitter tells you it's good. Then you've got to put it nose down and spin it this way until the transmitter tells you it's good. And then that c calibrates the compass. Um, but I, I believe new firmware versions, you only have to do that once. And then if you move to a different flying site, you can manually choose to redo that, which you'll want to do if you, you, know, you move quite a ways away for another flight. But as long as you're flying in the same area, you only need to do that once. Um, it does have LEDs here on each motor, on the, on the motor pods here, so that's pretty cool. Um, I don't have, oh yeah, I do in my notes. The front is blue and the back is red. And then I, I believe they, they change colors. I don't know if they change colors or if they just blink differently. Um, it's one of those things where they, they do so much to indicate different modes that it, it makes it hard to remember what is what. But they, they do blink or change colors or something to indicate if you're in GPS hold or if you're doing a return to home and stuff like that. Uh, but as long as you know, you're just normal flying, front is blue, back is red. Um, I think that covers all the details. Let me check through my notes one more time. Yep, that does it. So let's go take it out for a flight. All right, this is the flight review of the Hubson FPV X4 Desire H502S. Uh, this is basically the same as the H501S, except this has brushed motors and it's a little bit smaller and the camera isn't quite as good. Um, but it does have a wide angle lens and it still has GPS and follow me mode and everything. So as far as I know, this is the first brushed quadcopter with GPS. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and start it out here in the road because wherever I start it is my home position. So I want it to return to home there. And Looks like I've got nine satellites on the quad and eight on the transmitter right now. That should be good enough to start. We'll both sticks to the outside corner to arm it and start giving throttle. And this does have altitude hold even in manual mode. So even without GPS lock, it'll hold its height there. And uh, let's go ahead and flip the left stick up and that turns on GPS hold so it should let's get it out here a little bit more away from the trees and cars and so now it should be doing a GPS lock and holding its position I do have a bit of a breeze so it's kind of twitching around trying to do it and being that it's you know brushed geared motors it's a little bit harder for it to make those adjustments so it's a little more twitchy than the, than the brushless version but Still pretty cool to see a, a brushed quad doing a GPS hold like that. And then while I'm in G GPS hold, if I flip the right stick up, or the right switch, let's see what this car does here. Not coming this way. Alright, so let's move it out further away, actually. I mean, if I flip the right switch up, it should do a return to home. Oh, there's another car coming. Keep it over there, I'm just holding its GPS lock. Wait for these cars to pass. All right, and now I flip that switch up and it should gain some height first. And then it'll go over and find its position. There, it's going to the position. Make sure no cars are coming. And it looks like it's just about over the position now. And here it comes down, coming to make its landing. And that's, you know, all it. I'm not doing a thing. And not bad. Hold the right, or bow sticks out to stop it again. All right, well, there was our return to home. Let's 
Go ahead and rearm it and do some more flying now. I'm just back in normal manual mode. It's a little bit tricky to fly in manual mode when you have altitude hold. It kind of does some weird stuff, but it is still a pretty nice flying quad even with the altitude hold going. That's full pitch forward, so not a ton of pitch. All right, flip GPS back on, let it kind of lock in a position here. It's okay, now clicking the left stick is going to put it in headless mode, but if I click the right stick, that's going to do a follow me mode, which looks like I still don't have, I'm not getting great GPS coverage on the transmitter here. Now I've got nine and eight, so. I think all I need is six or eight maybe. I don't know. Let's so if I click the right stick it should do follow me, which it should turn around and face me with the camera so it's like a selfie quad. So yeah, it looks like you can see me there in the screen pretty well, pretty centered on screen and a little twitch there. So now as I move it should follow me around because it uses the GPS on the transmitter to know where that is versus where it is. And so it just follows with me. If I walk towards it, it should fly away from me. As you can see in the camera there, it's keeping me in the center. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and cross back over here. And it's following along with me. Not bad. Pretty neat. So, you know, it'd be good if you're out hiking or something, you want it to kind of fly around following you. So go ahead and click the right stick again to turn that off. So I'm still in GPS hold. Battery's getting a little low, so let's go ahead and start the camera by hitting that right bumper button on the transmitter. And let's go ahead and get some footage for a minute. Get it up there kind of high in the wind and see how it does with this wind and GPS hold. So that's, I'm not touching a thing, that's just it holding its GPS position up there in the wind. Not bad for a brush quad. Let's go ahead and do a slow pan. Pretty twitchy, it's, you know, the wind's making quite a bit of racket up there and with the brush geared motor system it's hard to make quick and little adjustments so it it's a little twitchy and that comes through on camera because there's no stabilization or anything but still pretty impressive for a brushed quad and gps and all that not bad look at that holding its position all right we'll go ahead and stop the camera my battery is getting pretty low so hit the right switch up and do another return to home so again, that's entirely it. Flying over to its position. Stay away from the tree. Yeah, it looks like it's about over the spot. No more cars coming. And it's coming down to make its landing. Looking pretty good. And there she goes. That's pretty close to perfect there and stop the motors by holding both of them out and there it is not bad at all that's pretty cool for a brush quad I've never as far as I know this is the first brush quad with GPS I think that's pretty cool very neat model FPV and everything wide-angle lens on it very very neat all right, well, that's the uh, H502S. Check the video description for price and purchase link. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.